being in the grounding classes, that was really, that was really valuable. Um, just, you know, because they're also pushing you, but no one pushed like Cynthia Segetti. That was the most important teacher I ever had, because she's the one who really pushed. Because she was fearless. She wasn't afraid of hurting your feelings, or she was like, stop, stop, oh, it's horrible, no, ah, I can't, you know. It was so good, it was just honest, and I can deal with honest. I can't, it's hard for me to, if I have to read between lines, you know. So it was really great to have her be so direct. Um, and there were some great teachers at the Groundlings too, really great teachers. And their style of teaching is really good because it's, um, it's pretty nurturing, it's pretty accepting. You've got to make people feel safe enough to take risks and, um, you know, I, I think I learned so much from the Groundlings, and it wasn't just the improvisation, but as I got in the mindset of what improvisation was, I understood, like, forget acting. That's what you need for life. You have to really listen and really respond to what's been said. You know, that was really, really important. And then the mindset of um, whatever is said, it's okay. Whatever is said is okay, it's fine, it's good. It's good, whatever is said, because that's you know how you're defining, you're creating this world and the scene and the characters and you have to take it all in as truth. And, and that also helped a lot, I think, just for interacting with people, coping with auditions, be in the mindset of it's fine if they're eating lunch while you're auditioning. <laughs> that's a good thing. You'll figure out why later, but just decide that it's a good thing because, you know, anything that makes you feel like, like, ugh, that's, you can't seize up, you know, for acting and for auditioning and doing your best. So I thought that was a really, really helpful mindset. And then you get to the, the writing levels that, that was the most important part of the Groundlings for me. And they had this, uh, what was it called? What was it called? I don't, I don't remember even what it was called. It was like character monologues. It's before the advanced level. And so they had this one writing level where you're only writing character monologues. And then at the end of that course, you perform two character monologues. And then that's when you, it, they decide whether you can move into the advanced class. And that was a turning point for me. Not even a turning point. It was just a huge boost for me. Um, the teacher was Tracy Newman, who had been a groundling for a long time. Her sister is Lorraine Newman. And Tracy was a fantastic teacher. Uh, Tracy also, you know, was uh, writing partners way after that with Jonathan Stark, and they won an Emmy for Ellen, for the, like, the episode of Ellen, I think, the coming out episode, I think. Um, Anyway, Tracy was fantastic because she was also just very matter of fact. That's what I loved about Groundlings, that it was, you know, when your work's getting critiqued, it's not personal, ever. The assumption is, no, you're good and you can do it, but this wasn't as funny as you can be, and this wasn't good, and this didn't make sense, and I loved, I loved that. And um, so I, I loved her, and, you know, I did... I did a character monologue, I did a biology professor. So I started with what I knew. And uh, this biology professor, and to me it was what was just so funny about, it was a composite of the teachers I'd had, you know, in college. And, you know, what was so, to me what was funny about them was that they just didn't know how unfunny they were, how out of it they were, and they try to make jokes, and you know, it's just, it's not funny, or to them what's funny is something so inside that even the students in the class, you know, wouldn't know to laugh, and so that was very fun. And then she was saying, okay, look, what people want to see from you is, uh, you do these smart characters and you do this stuff a lot, but we've never seen a dumb character from you. And we need to see a dumb character. We need to see an airhead just Go for it. We need to see that. Because I was really resistant and I would never play a dumb character. 
So I did this, all right, I drew from, I mean, I knew plenty of them in high school, that's for sure. So I did someone, you know, f not one, again, it's a composite of girls from high school on spring break in Palm Springs, where they're just like getting drunk somewhere. I don't know where I woke up, you know, I just like woke up as if, isn't that cool, it's so funny and good. And, <laughs> um, and so when I did the biology professor, that was my first performance as an adult in a theater with an audience, 99 seat theater. And that was the first performance I'd ever had. And it was un it was unbelievable. It was like um, this otherworldly experience to me. Because I remember really clearly being out there and doing my monologue, but feeling like I was connected to the audience on I don't know what level it is, where I could an feel, anticipate milliseconds before, like how they were gonna react and how to alter my performance to pull them this way or pull them that way, or I don't know, or given how they did react, which was a surprise, how to use that and turn it into this, or it's hard to be articulate about this, but I, like, part of me was with them. It wasn't with me. It was with them. And it was a crazy, ex it, was, it was really something. And um, I think I slept for three days after that. Not slept, I was in bed. I was spent. I was spent. And I thought, oh, you actually can't do that again because you won't survive. <laughs> I don't know, you can't survive. I was sapped. I was completely drained and sapped and in bed. And it wasn't just the performance, it was after the performance when people were, oh my God, that was unbelievable. That was like blown away by that biology professor monologue. Um, and people that I had a lot of respect for, you know, I didn't know they would be at the performance. They were like former groundlings and, you know, turned out John, Jonathan Stark had been there. And he's, you know, just this really revered improvisation actor. There was a group called um, Instaplay, Bill, Bill and Sherry Steinkellner, Billy Steinkellner did, that I'd only heard about. They were sort of legendary. And Jonathan Stark was always an Instaplay, so he's like, you know, this improviser um, and just brilliant guy that I didn't know yet. I did later, we became friends, but he saw it too. And I don't know, I was like soaking up everybody's praise, like soaking it up. And that was also exhausting. I didn't know it at the time. I was just like soaking it up and just flying around in my head, you know. But I think that also contributed to like having to take to the bed for <laughs> three days. It was like I was sick, like a flu. No energy, nothing, sat. And again, I, yeah, I'll repeat. I thought, you can't do that ever again. So you can't take in all the praise that you get, and you can't, I don't think you could give that much either in a performance. Because if you're going to do it regularly, you won't survive. You can't do it. So, uh, but I don't know whether that's right or wrong. I just remember thinking that. <laughs>